Hi, everybody. Good evening. I hope you all can hear me. Welcome back to Nutrition Lawyer channel. As you know, on this channel, we advocate for healthy living, healthy lifestyle, longevity, a ketogenic diet, fasting, both intermittent fasting and full fasting, and of course, detoxification of your body, mind, and soul. And that leads into general happiness because if you're eating well and you're looking good and you love the way you look, you're gonna be happier, right? Yeah, you'll be happier. That's generally how it is. So send, um, send us a message in the chat. Let me know that you're here, all right? And, um, you know, as to, as you know, today, we're actually going to be talking with attorney Colleen. All right. Colleen has been fasting for over a year now, and she's going to be talking to us about her personal journey on fasting and what it has done for her. All right. Now, and you know, you'll hear that she was a skeptic on fasting as well. So, um, so that should be a really, really wonderful chat. And there are some studies that just came out actually some nutritional studies that have been making the rounds um, internationally that fasting is not good for us and so i've actually gotten messages from people who are on my fasting program to tell me that you know should i be concerned because they're saying that fasting is going to give me heart attack fasting is going to do this to me or that to me so is it something that's going to be good for me to continue to do, okay? And I've heard from men and women. Now, we're, today we're talking to about Black women and Black women's health because um, it's a very important topic. Of course, you know, nutrition lawyer is a Black woman. <laughs> Full disclosure, in case you didn't realize this, okay? I am a Black woman, a proud Black woman, always been Black, all right? And so, um, so we're going to be talking about our issues with fasting or issues with health. Um, it's Women's History Month as well. And so I think this is a very, very appropriate topic for any time of the year, but particularly now with women's history. Okay. And I've gotten messages from men who have messaged me already saying, <laughs> what about black men? Are you going to talk about us? And so listen, yes. I will definitely talk about black men's health, but I'm doing it in April, all right? March is Women's History Month. So I hope that if you're a black male, you'll join us and, um, and, and tune in to what's affecting black women because of course what affects black women affects black men, right? It affects you. So um, with that being said, I am going to, um, also let you know that after the interview with Colleen, you can join the conversation. All right. So I will post the link if you're interested in coming up afterwards on video or just audio. If you don't want to show your face, that's fine. You want to maintain your privacy, that's fine. And you can come up and you can talk to us about either your fasting journey or whether or not you want to fast or if you're fasted and it worked or did not work for you. Okay. Um, one of the things that I think I should, I will add to the, um, to the chat as well is on um, Dr. Pradeep from the Galen Foundation, who did an entire fantastic lecture on fasting and why fasting is so important in our society. Um, now, lots of folks have told me that um, I'm starving myself or I'm going to die or something from, from time restricted eating or actually not eating for, you know, one day, two day or three days. And, you know, I'm still alive. I've been fasting since January, 2020. <laughs> okay. So actually right before the pandemic hit, um, I've been doing full fasting. I should say that I was intermittent fasting for about four years before that. All right, because I was trying to get my health in order and I was trying to get my uh, my weight in check. Um, I was overweight and um, I didn't I never worried about my weight before, but I didn't even realize that I literally ballooned up 
from a size two to a size eight. Okay, so I just kept buying new suits. Um, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm a little bit chubby here. I'm gonna get, get a size four suit. And then I got bigger than a size four. I'm like, oh, I'll just get a size six. And then I got bigger than a size six and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get an eight. And that's when like, there was a wake up call, like that's craziness, right? <laughs> That's craziness. I'm little. I'm five and five three. And so um, and I was an athlete and I never had to worry about weight. All right. So, um, yeah, so that was probably like in the last 10 years, I realized that I need to do something else to help myself. And so I looked at various mechanisms and learned about intermittent fasting from another lawyer um, who told me what she was doing that was helping her. And then a few of the years after that, I learned about full fasting from another black lawyer um, I was working on a project with who did like a, I think she did a 14 week fast, water fast. And I'm sorry, not 14, 14 days, <laughs> so, two weeks, two weeks. She did two weeks. And so she told me about, um, she told me about that. And I decided that I was gonna do a seven day um, fast with a group with water fast, which was, I felt so amazing. I said, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to do this every month, but I can't do seven days every month. And so I lowered it to three, three days each month. All right. It's done wonders for my health and wellness. Um, I'll definitely do a whole show on that at some point, but I definitely want to, um, let's, let's talk with um, Colleen about her journey. All right. Definitely. Let's talk about um, her journey. So without further ado, give me one second and I'll bring Colleen up. Hey. Hi, Colleen. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Colleen, let me just, let me just tell you, Colleen, you look so fantastic. Oh my gosh. You're looking so good. You look wonderful. Oh, thank you. And I just had a birthday. And, so and, and, and yes, yeah, so happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. It's wonderful to, to see you. Thank you. So, I, actually, Colleen, you can hear me because I lost my headset. Can so, hear. can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. Perfectly. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I can hear you perfectly. And everyone, if you're in the chat, please let us know um, if you're able to hear us okay. All right. So, we want to make sure that everybody can hear and, and hear us well. All right. So Colleen, let's, um, let me ask you a few questions. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I, I know that you're a vegan, right? Well, and more, more like a vegetarian uh, pescatarian. I've, I've gone from oh, okay, okay. raw vegan to vegan to pescatarian. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Fantastic. So you're a pescatarian. Um, and everybody, I'm, I'm ketogenic, right? <laughs> mostly ketogenic, mostly ketogenic. Okay. So how, um, how long have you been, you know, can you reveal the years? How long have you been a vegan slash vegetarian now pescatarian? Well, if truth be known, um, back in the 80s, I read a book by, uh, I think it was called Fit for Life. And I think it was published in the 80s. And my then um, love of my life, my boyfriend then and I, we decided that we liked what it was advocating because no one likes to diet. And it, it talked about <laughs> eating um, more fruits and the order in which you were going to you know, eat your food during the day, consume your meals during the day. And so we both decided back then, oh, we like this. And it was as simple as that. However, when we began as vegetarians, it was back in the day when it wasn't popular. So we became the salad eater, the carb eater, because there was nothing ever provided for you at right. any event. And, you know, being black women, um, Caribbean women, you'd go to an event and there's the rice and peas and the mutton and the chicken <laughs> and then a little bit of salad on the side, right? So right, you know, right. So that was your daily regimen right eating everything around trying to be healthy but today it's so easy so i've been doing this now for in excess of maybe um non-meat non-meat uh for over 30 years wow amazing amazing and and colleen so 
we're going to pivot now to fasting. So when did you, <laughs> when did you decide that you were going to try, you were going to try to do a fast with us? Cause you made me. I actually... <laughs> okay. Full disclosures. We're lawyers together, right? And you've been fasting and I love food. Okay. I love all food that's healthy. And um, you said um, you were doing a fast. And I said, I've never done a fast before. But you know, you know that religious groups have done their fast, the Seventh day Adventist, the Muslim, they Absolutely. do it all the time, right? And I'm like, how on earth for millions am I gonna... of years. Yeah, You've millions been fasting of years. For, for millions of years. Yeah. Right. And I thought I could never do that. That's crazy. And so you spoke with me and you encouraged me. And I was a big skeptic right? Still a skeptic. And then I said, okay, you said, have a go. So I did. And all I could think about was food. From the moment I began to <laughs> fast, all I thought about was food. I would forage in the fridge. I'd open the door. Mm, what can I eat? Mm. And I don't even know that I was hungry. I was just conscious that I was eliminating food for a certain amount of time. And I think the first time, did I last eight hours? I don't think I did, right? You, you, you. <laughs> <laughs> didn't last long, Colleen. You didn't last long. <laughs> and, um, I don't like. And, 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 and there was a bucket of complaints. There was... <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. Who, who wants to starve? I mean, da, 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 da. that was me. I had all of them, right? But you yeah. were so loving. You were so gracious. And you said, no, you can do it. Just take it incrementally. And I think my next attempt, I think was the next month. I think I went an entire day and I was elated. Which was I amazing. Was like, oh my God, amazing. I did it. It was like, you know, you know that feeling you get when you finally conquered something? Oh yeah. And I was yeah. like, wow. And then you said to me, well, you got to try the next one, 48 hours before I got to the, what, 72 hours? Perfect. And so yes. you encouraged me, you supported me, you loved on me until I got to the 72 hours. And then when I did my first 72 hours, I was like, oh my God, I feel amazing. Oh, wow. And then I had to do the mind thing, constantly ask myself, are you hungry? Oh, you're not hungry. Because remember, we're not dry fasting, we're water fasting. So we can, we can drink our teas, we can drink our water. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a huge coconut water drinker. And you're like, no. I'm like, oh, oh my <laughs> <laughs> Okay, hold one, hold that one second, Colleen, because I have to tell everybody on, on this live, let me tell you, Colleen was like, honestly, a bit of a thorn in the fasting regimen. So if, if you don't know, um, we do a monthly three-day fast. It's it's for seventy-two hours, right. and we choose <laughs> we choose seventy-two hours because it's at that point where autophagy kicks in, and and Colleen is, is going to talk some more about that later. But it's when your entire immune system is rebuilt, like you're you're reset your system, you're building new cells at seventy-two hours, which is why I push it to three days. Okay, once a month. And so it's basically like you're a new you every month because your cells are replenishing and regenerating. So a lot of folks, of course, can't do 72 hours initially, right? You can start off with intermittent fasting and then you can start off with maybe one meal a day and then a 24 hour fast, 48 hours, 72, right? 72 is really, it's the big leagues. I'm not gonna lie, it's the big leagues. So, and a lot of it is mental. Yeah, right? it's all mental. Yeah. A lot of it is mental. Yes. And so at so I have a, a list of things that I tell people that they can eat, right? Sorry, drink. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. We get excited Cannot when eat. you say eat. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot eat. Okay, so that you can drink. So you can have water or tea or coffee, no sugar, no dairy, and you can have the fasting drink that I give you specific things that you can put in that water to drink okay all of that is just going to help you and um and of course salt for electrolytes right so colleen is one of these people that even though there's a list <laughs> she's like i love coconut water <laughs> can i 
at that. I'm like, you can't, it's gonna break the fast. <laughs> Like, and I how, wish how you could can add you co not coconut, drink water. coconut water. How can coconut water not be good for you? Explain. I love because... my coconut water. I know. <laughs> We're Jamaicans, right? right? We're both it's... Jamaicans. We love coconut water. Yeah. 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 And I was but... like, you need to explain why we couldn't drink coconut water because once you did that, it was, oh, I get it. Your cells, your stomach is still going to be doing the work because it has to process the sugar coming in the coconut. And we're like, oh. Thank you, Colleen. Tell everybody, please. <laughs> Go <Yeah>. ahead. <laughs> I love it. So <laughs> coconut water has a lot of sugar. It's natural sugar, but it's sugar nonetheless. So when it hits your body, okay, it's, it's going to break your fast. And one of the things that happens with fasting is that you will end up going in a, in a ketogenic state, right? You get into ketosis. And what prevents ketosis is all the sugar that you're consuming. And the sugar that you're consuming is not just table sugar, right? It's all the carbohydrates as well. And it's also from quote unquote, the natural sugars that are coming from those plants, right? We love plants. Yes, we're plant-based, but when you consume all of that, it actually hits your stomach, it's turned into sugar and it's preventing you, right? It's preventing you from kicking in fat burning. So if you if you actually want to lose weight, you have to kick in fat burning. And you have to do that, you would just have to do certain things, right? And some people say it's restriction, right? They say you're restricting yourself from this and you're restricting yourself from that. And I'm like, I'm preserving my black body. Okay. Ooh, I like that. Love it. Yeah. I love my black body. I'm preserving yeah. my black body. All right. Yeah. So there is restriction versus preservation. I'm very optimistic about life. I like to preserve, okay? And mm. I want us all to preserve, right? So if you're, if you're thinking about longevity and you're thinking about what you want to accomplish in life and all these different things that we all want to do, right? But if we don't have our health, we don't have anything. True. You can't get the bag if you're dead. You can't do all these wonderful things to help other people if that's what you want to do in life right you can't help yourself you can't help your family and and equally true is if you're laying in bed and you can't do anything so even if you're alive and you're just laying there you're not going to be able to help yourself and you're not going to be able to help your family or the community or your country right mm -hmm. so that's why we are such huge advocates for good health and particularly for us black women which I will go to, into some statistics later, but of course you all can just Google it and see how terrible our health is in general for our women, all right? So back to Colleen, <laughs> back to Colleen. So after, after you were told not to have coconut water, what, and, and you were very annoyed with me, then, then what? <laughs> then I, I had to, ask myself a question because as you've correctly said it's a mind thing and that question was are you hungry and the answer always was no the thing is i liked eating my mouth liked chewing but i really wasn't hungry and the more you go into a fast the longer rather not the more the longer you go into a fast you realize if you're really processing this correctly, you're not hungry, but you miss food. That's the truth, right? I, I think it's me and another truth. one of the ladies, and uh, we're in a group. And when they were, when any of us is challenged, someone comes in and helps. So, you know, you've been our teacher. And when you're absent, I'm like, this is how you do it. No, no, no. Check yourself. Are you really hungry? And the answer is always going to be no, but I miss food. So then you start saying, you know what? If I'm not hungry, I don't need to eat because it means that that wonderful word you taught us, autoc autophagy? Autophagy. 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 Yes. I cannot pronounce that word. You know? <laughs> Jamaicans have issues with the letter H, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. Oh my gosh. So, so true. Um, so then I. Yes. Here's what, here's what I know. For a fact. Right, great pill. If right. You're, great pill. If you, right? If you're born, you're gonna die. 
Okay. There's no one yeah. walking around saying I've lived forever. <laughs> the, the thing is you want to be as healthy as possible until it's your time. So yes, right. you want to look good, but you want to feel good. You want to eat for health. You want to make sure the things that you're putting in your body, they're good for you. And of course there are days you can just do the crap, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but you don't really do crap after you've began fasting because now you understand how the body's working. And so right. you're, you're putting stuff in your body now saying, you know, I've always been a conscious eater. I, I don't diet. I've never dieted. Well, that's not true. Back in the day I dieted. And as I told you, I don't have a scale. So right. I only know how much weight I have lost when I go to my um, primary care physician or anywhere and they weigh me. So I don't sit around thinking like some people have lost two pounds today, five pounds today, 10 pounds. I don't, I, I just look at my clothes and then all of a sudden your clothes is swinging on you and you're like, Ooh, you how much I love? yeah. And that's what happens. Don't, I don't know. Other people count calories and weight. I don't. So when you're fasting, you're not really hungry, but you do miss this. Because that's a habit. Yes. Right. Yes. That's your habit. You've been, yes. you've been eating and yes. eating and eating your entire life. Right. And now they're telling you, oh, you need to fast today. You're not going to eat all day. And you're like, your mouth is used to it. It's, it's, it's definitely a habit, right? So it's a habit. Yeah. It's a habit. Yeah. So that's and the big challenge. The big challenge is the mental, yeah, the mental challenge of, you know what? I'm not going to eat. And your mind yes. is like, please eat, please eat. Yeah. Yes. Please eat everything you see that's not on the lock and key. When you begin, you want it. Yes. Even if you don't even like it anymore, you just want it. And that was my hurdle. Now, I just go into my 72 um, hours with you now with ease and with grace. And, and I've hiked with it. I have worked out with it. I don't wait a minute, wait a minute, it. wait a minute. You're, 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 you're hiking while, while fasting for three days, please do yeah. tell. And, and, and what, and what level are you doing this? Is it, is it on the day one or day two or day three? That you're uh, gonna, the, you're doing the, hikes. The, I've day three. The last mm, hike I did was wow. a day three. Wow. And we went several meters up and came back down and everyone else went for lunch. This, this is showing you the, the strength <laughs> of my mind. Everyone oh, else man. had lunch and I did not. I, I wow. wasn't even, because I was coming up to, I had like, um, maybe six hours to go to complete my fast. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted the fulfillment of that journey. I didn't want to break right. it. So everybody else was eating and saying, girl, aren't you hungry? I actually wasn't hungry. I asked myself, are you hungry? No. Do you like what they're eating? Yes. But would you have eaten all the things they were eating? No, I would have probably eaten some fruit or some salad because I wasn't eating meat and all the, the sodium filled f foods mm -hmm. that they were eating. And I certainly wasn't going to judge them. Neither was I going to lecture to them because this was no judgment. Choice. No right. judgment. You're on your fast. They can eat. That's they fine. They like, right? Yes, absolutely. And, and then, you know, we'll get to it later. The way you taught me how to break the fast, I now so look forward to breaking my fast the right way. So because how I do you break your fast? How do you break oh, your fast? fast. <laughs> I do it with something soft. The first time I did the fast, I said to you, "Oh my God, my throat." felt almost constricted, right? And you said, mm -hmm. that's because you have to do something soft. And then you did a video making your pumpkin soup. So I started making pumpkin soup and I'm really mm. good at it now, by the way. So we yummy. Oh, we need to we're going to have a, yeah, we're going to, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We, we may actually good. have a pumpkin soup cook off. You and yes. I, that right? would be a good thing. Yeah. Cause now mm. because of you, I make excellent pumpkin soup. Ooh. I now eat chocho. -cho. I can also oh, do. Oh gosh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, right. And now, and I wasn't before. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really focused on that. I can also do a. I do my own hummus with um, Scotch bonnet pepper in my hummus. I make a great hummus. Oh, nice. and my hummus has flavor. Yeah. Ooh, and ooh then la la. I, I boil two eggs. I scoop out the yolk, and mm -hmm. then I stuff that with the hummus, and then I drizzle some olive oil. Oh, that sounds yum. It really is yum. Yummy, yummy, yummy. And at yummy. the base of that, I always have like some arugula, something polite and green and, you know, because it's all about <laughs> gut health, right? Absolutely. And so that's Absolutely. why I break a fast, either with a pumpkin soup. 
And then I always go back to my coconut water. I drink coconut mm. water all the time. <laughs> You're a coconut water woman, you know? I am a coconut. Do what you love. I can't climb a tree, but I can drink those coconut water. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it's, and, and really coconut water has so many nutrients in it. Right. So right. it's wonderful. It's wonderful yeah. for us when you're not fasting, everybody, when you're not, when fasting. You're not fasting. Yes. But you can or, buy it and keep it in anticipation of breaking because the electrolytes in it. Exactly. Good, very know? good. Very good. Yeah. Absolutely. So can you, can you tell us then Colleen, what, um, how do you feel fasting has helped your, your mind and your body? Ah, well, number one, I lost weight <laughs> without trying, without dieting. Right. right. So I probably, I think when I started, I may have been like about 150 something on the charts at the doctor's office. How and tall I, are you? I am five foot four. So okay. I, I wasn't even thinking I was overweight. I didn't even think about that because I told you I don't diet. And now mm -hmm. I'm down to, for the last time I weighed in, I was 130 pounds, I think. Very I think good. I got down so to yeah. like 130. Yes. And I, so I, stay, I stay there, right? Um, yeah. Because I don't diet. I just mm -hmm. eat normally, then go into the fasting, eat very healthily, prepare 90% mm -hmm. of my foods. I go out with friends. I am careful about how I eat, but I'm not dieting. If something is, if you're eating out, you're consuming more sodium, by the way. A lot Absolutely. more sodium. Mm -hmm. um, so over time, you help by teaching that. You know, be careful. Um, I'm also a great dessert person, and I was a raw food dessert freak before, because when I was doing my raw food before everything became popular, the desserts were the best things. Right. So, <laughs> I, so I still love my desserts, I, and and you can get filled from eating even pomegranates or mm -hmm. having um, dates or something else. But you still have, I still have that sweet, the need for sweet. I like something sweet. Um, so I, I eat as healthy as I can. I don't really deprive myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, FYI, you all know, if you've been watching this channel, that I don't believe um, that anything is really deprivation when i think about deprivation i'm thinking about somebody that's just eating some lettuce you know like <laughs> it's all they're eating like no but lettuce is we, good for you some eat, some masculine just, mitts and but some just, arugula but just, and... but just lettuce is yeah. not a proper human diet right no. you need to eat more than that so definitely a huge advocate for eating um good food good healthy food right that's right. not just something just lettuce because i remember like telling people i you know i'm vegetarian and they're like oh is that all you eat is lettuce and i'm like what <laughs> lettuce um so de definitely eat you know a, a lovely variety of food right that's going to enhance your health so a lot of times um it's okay to say you know once in a while i'll have this or once in a while i'll have that but what i've found sometimes for some people because you have an addictive personality if you have an addictive personality then you will get hooked on certain things and then you just constantly want to eat it right because if you do you know done some research on nutrition science right i have a certificate in nutrition science from stanford university and in that going through that program we did a lot of nutrition studies evaluation of them etc cetera, etc cetera. and one of the things that we studied was how chemists like food chemists right they the food companies hire chemists to determine which point that you're going to be addicted to the food right at which point yeah 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 wow. so you're thinking <laughs> you're thinking i am i'm eating this thing because i love it and it's so good but you're actually it's already tested to trigger whatever in your brain right to then crave, yes, to then crave it and keep wanting more so that they can get richer off of our addiction or ill health that, you know, may turn out to be. So we have to be mindful sometimes of that, um, of, of why you're craving certain things, right? So <laughs> just FYI. 
an aside, FYI. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. But you know, it's funny that you have Hi. Go ahead, Colleen. Can, can you hear? Yes, I can. Okay. So, I, I, I put you at the solo so you can talk. <laughs> oh, I go see. Ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the longer you go or you attempt the fasting, the less you have a sugar craving. And then you find that you can satisfy those sugar cravings very easily, a pomegranate, um, blackberries or blueberries, and it just disappears. But it doesn't mean that you're boring. When you go out, your friends are eating, you can eat too. Just be normal. All I know is that it's very healthy to adopt a healthy lifestyle so that, like I said before, you know you're born. If you're born, you know you're going to die. So all you're doing is trying to be as healthy as possible until that moment, as healthy as possible, nothing else. And the healthier you are, the more you're saving on your health bills because you're not running to your doctors every minute because you don't have a lot of ailments. And um, I have, um, for example, perennial rhinitis, right? Um, which is just allergies to the environment for everything. And I find that I was like, mm, I have not, oh, I've not sneezed in a while. But if I walk into a room that has so many different environmental toxins, I pick it up right away, you know, um, but no, I, I've seen the report that you've, you've spoken about and I, I'm not a doctor. I can't give anybody advice. I can only tell you what I have been doing and how it has made me feel. And I love that word, autophagy, autophagy, whatever it is, just knowing that I'm helping my body to do cell repair, you know, um, your skin glistens, um, your clothes fits better, um, and you resent everything you'd given away when you were had started putting on weight, you know, just like you spoke to. When you started get putting on weight, you started buying bigger clothes. We all do that, right? And then you've given away some really nice pieces. Now that you're back down in weight, you're like, that wasn't smart. So I'll say to people, don't jump on the scale every minute. Just heal the body. Work with your body, um, be healthy, have a healthy mindset. Um, I, I do yoga, I meditate. Um, those are different wellness um, strategies that I do for myself. So you can find your own. And in the group that we're in, it's a no judgment zone. It's a very effective group of women and they're all extremely supportive. Some women are stronger than others. I know I introduced um, a particular friend, and she just went at it like that. I was envious. She jumped in to support me, and she was like, oh, I can do this. And then I saw her, and her face was just radiant and healthy. She looked amazing. So fasting for some people is very easy, and for some, for like myself, it's a struggle. I needed to be whipped all the way to the, you know, to the <laughs> post. But now I'm doing it, I really enjoy it. And I want to say thank you for being patient with me. And thank you for always being supportive um, and being non-judgmental. Thank you. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to help all of us get well and get healthier, right? Um, fasting has just done wonders for me personally. So um i actually cured a thyroid condition from from fasting so um instead of having a surgery um to cut my throat so um so i'm a huge huge advocate of of fasting now the the study there's a study that came out right and this study was a survey um so the first thing that everyone should and it made the rounds everywhere i mean i saw it on cnn and i saw it, it it was like all over the news right so one of the one of the things that we all know and and should be very aware of is that whenever something like that comes out that is gonna benefit 
the food industry who runs the place right it makes it everywhere right but when there are all these amazing benefits of fasting which we will definitely discuss you don't see it anywhere <laughs> It's not all over CNN and all the, the newspapers about the benefits of fasting. You have to go ahead and do your own research and find that out, right? So I always ask the question, who is funding this study? And a lot of times you can't even see who's funding it because it's buried in you know, shell companies and whatnot, but it typically is the food industry. So who is funding it? What are they gonna get out of it, right? Because the medical professionals that are are doing the study are they have to get grants and whatever to do these things right they have to be paid to do these things right so who is benefiting that's my first question and that's you should always ask your question that question when you see things like that who is benefiting from this and then fasting doesn't benefit the food industry at all in fact they lose a lot of money from us not eating right <laughs> They're gonna lose all kinds of money from us not eating. So, and to 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 add some more layers to it, they're gonna lose a lot more money if folks are not getting sick, right? I am not a conspiracy theorist. I'm really by no means one of those things, but I am very um, astute at assessing things, right? And I know that there are folks that tell me um, when we're going to be fasting, how should I prepare for fasting? What, what, what do I need to buy? Right. And I'm like, well, you don't mean you actually don't need to buy anything. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> you mean nothing. I mean, nothing. You're, you're not eating. You're not going to need anything. Just your water. You're good. Literally. You can just do water fast. You're good. Right. Mm -hmm. And even if you do, and, and if you do a dry fast, you don't even drink water. Right. So I just came off of a fast a couple of days ago. I was going to do five days, but I actually just ended at, at 72 hours. Um, and I did a fast um, a few days ago because whenever I was traveling and whenever I travel, I eat the food in the country. Right. Yeah, I try to eat the food. In the, I don't eat the meat, but I eat the food in the country. And so I needed to detox. I was in Australia. Um, for over a month and I needed to detox. So when I got back, I was like, OK, I'm going to do a cleanse for 72 hours, uh, maybe five days, possibly seven, but I stopped at three. I was done at three. And it's like, it's okay to like give yourself grace too. Like if you decided you're going to do five days, and you know, in three days, you know, you know what, I'm going to eat now, or I'm going to drink some water. I'm going to, whatever it is. I was doing a dry fast, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, then just, just do it. It's fine. I know that I did 72 hours, a little over 72 actually, and that, I already did my cell repair. So I'm perfectly happy. But anyway, so back to this study, right? So everybody is, is alarmed at this study because as I said earlier, there were people who, um, men and women are on my fasting team or, or we have a WhatsApp group for just women, but, we do, but I do have men and women fasting with us. And I got a bunch of messages asking about this study. Um, and most of them were from the men, actually. <laughs> Am I going to get a heart attack from fasting? What's going on? Um, so, Colleen, do you, did you actually look at this study? I did. did you look I, at the, the, I, yeah. took, I took a quick read of it, um, yeah. clearly. Um, I, it, caught, it, it caught my eye, and I said, okay, let me take a quick read of the study. Um, and the number, I think it was 91% more likely to have a cardiovascular um, issue than normal, right? Yes. And I, yes. I think... Just well, alarming. Think, yes. Right, right. And I think the participants were, what, 60, 60 people? Was mm -hmm. it 60 people mm -hmm. on that, on that yeah. study? And so that number is very, very high. Yes. So obviously I'm not a doctor, um, but, you know, you, you have to pay attention to things when they come out and go see your own physician, have that conversation. How healthy are you? How suitable? I've had those conversations with my mm -hmm. um, primary care physician. And I think yeah. everyone needs to be really cognizant of um, their own health care 
and yes. to speak to someone who's professional before doing anything. And if they understand um, how you're functioning and what's healthy and they're a good doctor, then they'll tell you the best thing for you. That's, that's as much as I can say. Um, but of course, it's a study. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They say they've done the work and I, I don't ignore anything. I mean, hey, we're lawyers, right? So we dig for facts, right? We do, um, we do. So, and we don't tell other people what to do. You know, we just say, right. okay, here's what I would do. I will speak to my physician about this. And um, if it's not good for me, um, she'll tell me, you know what, Colleen, mm -hmm. pull back or do something differently. Are you hungry? Are you unhealthy? Can you not um, work out? Can't you hike? Da, 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 da. And I'll say, okay. But generally, since doing it with you and being supported by the group, I've had really, really good um, results with it. In fact, I'm proud of myself when I am eating for my health. So proud of you too. <laughs> so very proud of Colleen. You all, I told you earlier, Colleen was one of those people that's you're like, oh my gosh. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Here's another question about something that is not on the list. Okay. You know, geez, she's, my goodness, is I cannot, I cannot. Yeah, but trust. Um, but I but I also love that too about Colleen because at least she's asking the questions, you know. There are people who will just go and do their own thing and then it doesn't work for them they're not getting the results and they're saying it's what you're doing that's not working but it's what they're doing right and they're not they're not they're not um conversing with you so it's so important that if you're on sort of doing any sort of thing like this that you let the person know who is you know dealing with it like yay you know nl this is not working for me this is what i'm doing you know how can i do it better or, what's going to work better for me. You know what I mean? Um, there are people who tell me that they cannot fast at all um, because they have certain things. They have hypoglycemia or they're, you, you name it, I've heard it. And, and I am not a doctor. Okay. I, well, not a medical doctor. I am a doctor of law. <laughs> <laughs> we do have doctorate degrees as lawyers. Um, so I am not a medical doctor and so I can't, so I do, I'll do the full disclaimer, the legal disclaimer, <laughs> not a medical doctor, although most doctors, you know, do not know about nutrition, full disclosure. That's, that's just a fact. That's what they tell you, right? So they don't know about nutrition. 99.9% .9 of them don't know anything about nutrition. Anyways, so I'm not a doctor, so I'm not telling you that you should do this or you must do this. We're sharing what we have done and how it's benefited us as black women and i think that other black women should be fasting black women should be fasting okay i've seen the the various studies and i'm going to go back to the study that colleen and i were discussing um when you look at studies like that besides looking at who is benefiting you also should look at how is the data collected right so if you think about it if someone gives you a survey right and they said to you, oh, um, I see Grey Pill podcast in the chat. Hi, Grey Pill. Great to see you here. Um, so if I say to Grey Pill, Grey Pill, um, what did you eat, you know, in the month of January? Um, I want to send, send the daily food list that you ate. Are you going to remember, Grey Pill, or a positive lifestyle? Are you going to remember what you ate, right? I see my cooking lifestyle in the chat. Hi, do you know what you ate in January? <laughs> so, so this is the problem with these surveys, these food surveys. And this is what that study was. The study was sending surveys to people and asking them what they ate. So I just, I, I just think the study is bogus for that reason, because a lot of us cannot remember properly. Doesn't mean, you know, I say people lie, people do lie as well, because they're trying to like, you know, do things that they think are going to help the study, maybe, you know, so they may say they ate this or that, or they fasted this way or that way. Um, but I think that if it was a controlled random trial, right, which is the gold standard of studies, if it was a controlled random trial, and that was the result, yes, then I would buy it. But because it's not, and it's just random survey setting to people and people are 
memory issues. Um, they think they ate this or they think they fasted this way or that way. Um, I don't think it's reliable. And when you look at the science as well, and I'm going to leave some links below this on um, the various folks that I have studied besides the book stuff, folks on YouTube that I have actually studied um, Dr. With, for nutrition. Dr. Predip is one mm. of those. He, he's a heart doctor. He's a cardiologist. Okay. Huge advocate of fasting and listing all the benefits that you get from fasting. And, and he's citing scientific research as well on those. Um, and for everything that he's listing, he's, he's, he's citing. Okay. So I'm going to post his um, video in the link so that you all can watch that. I want everybody, please watch Dr. Pretty. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, Dr. Jason Fung, I, I, I studied his book on fasting. And of course, I've watched his his um, his lectures on YouTube on fasting as well. So Dr. Jason Fung is a nephrologist. He, he is a kidney doctor and he deals with a lot of diabetic patients. And diabetes is such a huge epidemic in the in the black community. Yeah. And yes. And so he helps folks with diabetes um, through fasting, through fasting. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Jason Fung, F-U-N-G, look him up, please subscribe to his channel. Um, subscribe to Dr. Pradeep. Um, we also have Sadhguru as well, mm -hmm. who is a yogi um, who also does fasting. And please um, look, look him up as well and subscribe to his channel, all right? Um, I think it's so important that we get a varied understanding of what it's doing, what fasting does for us, and also how it can help present, prevent certain diseases or um, reduce your chances of getting certain illnesses. Um, I just, I listened to another lecture by Dr. Prady, and one of the things that he pointed out was that if you actually do a seven day fast, you can do it once a year or twice a year. But if you do a seven day fast once, right? Seven days, water fast, that it, research has shown that it reduces your chances of getting cancer by 70%, 70%, okay? Seventy percent. So I think um, that is just, astonishing to me that level is just seven days Are you serious um but that's what the research and the research came out of boston university uh medical school on what a seven day water fast can do in terms of as it relates to cancer um the other stuff with cancer is that because you're at 72 hours because you're renewing the your cells. immune system yes you're doing cell repair um, we all have cancer cells in our bodies, but if you're doing cell repair, um, then those cells are going to be falling off. New cells are growing. And so you're going to just lessen your chances of getting certain illnesses um, when it comes to that. Right. And, you know, we all know that the body is the, the body is, is it a machine? I don't know. It's a machine, but but we need to tinker and repair and do things, right? We have to, right? We have to put good gas in our bodies, right? To function. Yeah, um, put good gas in. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And sadly, a lot of a lot of us, you know, we take care of our cars, right? We do the oil change, we do this, we that, and good gas, but we don't do that to ourselves. That's we, true. we don't do it to ourselves. And we need to make sure that we are we are number one priority when it comes to our engine. You know, but but to be fair, um, Nikki, um, one of the things is it's very confusing because on the one hand, today something is good for you. Next week, it's not good for you. Um, <laughs> they, you know, yes. I, re I remember when I switched from drinking white wine to red wine because the reservatrol was good for me and I was going to be having my dose of reservatrol, right? And then another survey comes out and said, oh, not good for you. And then a survey comes out that tells you all about lectin in foods and you're like, oh, really? 
what's it doing? Micro tears in your gut. Um, so with the advent of um, technology, we're actually learning a lot more about things that we otherwise wouldn't. And I think that it's on everyone to really um, participate in the learning process because there is so much that is coming out now that we never knew. We had no idea. And so now that you have an idea and there are also genetics um, that you can you know, go to your doctor and um, have those conversations, things that we didn't know about. Um, and what foods are good and what things are creating havoc in your body and um, how to get around it. And there are foods as Caribbean people that we've been eating for a very, very long time, like green bananas and plantains and short. That's excellent for you. And I saw a survey on Aki's. Mm. That's supposed to be really good for you. And nobody else eats that. And we hope they don't because they'll be less for us. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so I, I think that there's a lot of information. I, I will never say somebody's um, research is, is bogus, but I will say there's always a payday at the end of every research. True, was a true. Payday, you true. know? I. Uh, I do agree. I do agree with you that um, it can be confusing because because it changes over time, right? I do remember, for example, eggs. They said eggs weren't good for you. Um, I never listened. I ate eggs, <laughs> but but now eggs are in full fashion, right? So it it. But but the it, thing it, is, it right? Is it, it's not for us to stop eating everything. This it's a world. If we went into a store and. <laughs> And all you had was one way of, of, of choosing a particular grocery. You went into the flower store and all they had was daffodils. And it's a world. And, and you and I, we travel and there are new things that we find every day. It, it doesn't mean that you have to stop everything. It just means you have to pay attention to your body. Eat what's good for you, what makes you feel good. And you're not putting anybody out of business. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's true. You cannot eat everything anyways, right? I knew, I know they say eat the rainbow and I'm like, I can't eat all of that. So I'm going to eat certain things that are good for me and also that I, I, I really love, right? That I enjoy. And your taste buds do change. Yes. Because, because there are certain things that I used to crave that I, I stopped craving a long time ago from whether or not it was fasting or whether or not I became ketogenic. I, that definitely changed. Right. And then there's certain things that you may want to try. Like, for example, in April, I'm ketogenic now. And, and for people who don't know, ketogenic is low carb, um, moderate protein and high healthy fat um, lifestyle. Right. And I found that that works really well for my gut health. Um, but in April, I'm going to try paleo. I want to do 30 days of paleo after my fast because that's and, and, and that's different from a ketogenic lifestyle um, because you would be eating fruits, a lot of fruits on paleo, and you don't do that on keto. So I'm going to try it over 30 days and see how it affects my gut health, my weight, everything. I'm going to track it. But it's, I think it's okay to like experiment and try different things um, and see what is going to work for you. Now, fasting is, of course, I think that's a staple. <laughs> Fasting, fasting is a staple. And now there, there are some folks who have said um, fasting is, is dangerous for certain um, age women as well, or doing it certain times of um, what age group, right? Month, what, right? What so, age group? so this what is, so, so it's not dangerous. It's, it's not considered dangerous um, if, these, these are the conditions. If you're, if you're actually pregnant, you shouldn't be fasting. Oh. If you want to get pregnant, um, you probably shouldn't fast. Definitely don't fast while you're ovulating, right? So don't fast while you're ovulating. If you're a woman, don't fast. If um, when you're on your period, don't fast um, if you're pregnant. If you want to look at your, your, um, your cycle. So make sure you're tracking your cycle, all right? Make sure you're tracking your cycle. And if you also are want to get pregnant and you really want to fast, then do it right right before, like maybe right after your period, um, that that week. What, what, okay? 
what kind of fasting are they talking about? Because um, it's Ramadan for Muslim women, for example, and they fast all the time. Colleen, this... we, Colleen, we've been fasting for a millennia. Right. Listen, and so I am just telling you what, what, what those, those folks are saying. I am not saying that this is what I'm advocating. I am just mm. telling you all what they're saying. They're saying uh, that if you're, if you're okay. a woman who is of a certain age, like, so you're in your twenties, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to get, and you want to get pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. Don't fast during ovulation. Don't fast during your period. You can fast after, right? Um, I don't know in terms of Muslim women, I don't think, I've never heard that that's affected their fertility, but mm. some folks says it's, it's, it has affected their fertility both ways, that it actually increased their <laughs> fertility and other folks said it decreased their fertility. That's interesting. Um, mm. Yes. So um, in a, if you're fasting in your 30s, the same thing. If you, if you want to have children or et cetera, et cetera, make sure that you can schedule it. Just schedule it. Don't do it while you're ovulating because it may actually stop your ovulation. If you're doing like a full fast, it may stop oh, your ovulation. Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, just don't do it while you're ovulating, right? Mm -hmm. And don't do it during your, um, during your men menstrual cycle. Obviously you wanna get pregnant. So just, mm -hmm. but those other two weeks you have, um, and then for sure, see your doctor. See your doctor, have a conversation with your doctor. Always. Um, go with your OB and, and have a conversation about how it may affect your um your fertility all right but um in terms of that's the only thing that i've actually heard um mm -hmm. of you know be mindful as a woman if you're fasting um other than that like colina said i mean folks have been fasting for millions of years and we've been perfectly healthy it's actually like our normal state is to feast and fast our, our normal human state for millions of years has not been to constantly eat. Never been, right? It's only been maybe the last, what, 12,000 years or something? But we're talking about millions of years. Humanity is millions of years old. <laughs> you know what? I just had an aha moment. Hmm. Who is likely to be impacted are the snack foods because you're not going to be snacking as much. And that's what we've been taught to do. We snack a lot. Well, I don't know. I used to snack a lot. We, so, we as humanity, yes. Yeah. You yes. know, and we're constantly snacking. And I was snacking a lot before, um, before my fasting. The best, the best thing that you can do, um, everyone, the best thing that you can do for your health is to stop snacking. That's number one. That is number one. Stop snacking. Every time, every time you're eating, you're triggering insulin and you're preventing, um, you're, you're actually increasing insulin resistance and you're preventing fat loss, right? So d the constant snacking is not good, but not only that, what's in the snacks is the problem. Because if you're eating natural whole foods, that's one thing, but a lot of us are snacking on highly processed foods. Highly sodium, yep, sodium yes. rich. Yep. Not just yep. sodium rich, but chemical oils, fried in chemical oils, right? That's true, yeah. Um, canola oil or vegetable oil, which is garbage oil, right? It's chemicals. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. you're ingesting that stuff, not just the, the, the product, but the oil that's really like creating havoc on your gut. And if right. you don't have a good gut, I mean, all disease pretty much start in your gut. You don't have a good gut which is really like, is it your second brain or is it your first brain? I think it's probably your first brain, your gut. Um, then you're looking at the possibility of increasing all kinds of disease in, diseases in your body, right? You know, it's funny, I was speaking with a friend and I was saying, because if I need to go to the gym in the morning, right? I cannot leave because my bowels tell me I can't leave until I've gone to the bathroom, right? And then she said, oh, I haven't been to the bathroom in over a week. I was like, oh, my, oh my God. God, what? Wow. I, yeah, I was, she goes, she just doesn't go. So I'm like, have you been to your doctors? Don't you think that's a problem? Because it's 
like for me, it's it's really weird. When you have good gut health, you have good bowel movement. All those right? toxins are, are right. backed up in her system. That's right. alarming. She immediately needs to go to the doctor. Yeah. And so for me, even though you're healthy, your, your bowel movement is like controlling you now. Like you got to go. Nope. Bathroom. Okay, fine. Yeah. I got to go. <laughs> so once yes. you begin eating for your gut health, everything runs supposed to run smoothly it absolutely does yeah it so, absolutely does yeah and, does, and does, fasting will do that yeah absolutely absolutely does anybody um in the chat do you have a, a question for colleen about um her fasting um starting a fast how she's kept you you've kept going now for over a year right colleen you've been doing it every month for over a year which is so amazing like <laughs> I, know, right? I call i call my fasting folks rock stars because you have to be a rock star to be able to go three days without consumption okay yeah. like yeah. you are you have to be a rock star it's like a mental rock star right here it's a so mental yeah it's a it's a yeah. mental and, and and you know one of the one of the things that i love most about fasting is the mental sharpness and clarity that i get when i'm fasting i'm telling you like i feel like ooh, ooh, sky high it's amazing it's amazing and sharp like really sharp so no, we're, we're um, sharp anyway we just got more sharp yeah but like <laughs> like just just clear, like 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 crispy clear crispy clear right. that's what i love about it because most of the time now I'm not doing it for weight loss because I'm at my weight that I, you know, I'm in my weight range. I'm happy with it, mm -hmm. but it's the, it's the, the sharpness and the cell repair that I do it for. And I've been doing it now for over four years. January was four years, you know, so. Actually, Nikki, can I speak to something? Um, yes. When you intentionally fast and you begin to lose weight, You'd be surprised at the comments people make. Are you okay? <laughs> why, why are you losing weight? But you look okay. I said, no, I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm just trying to be healthier. I'm trying to do cell repair. I'm trying to eat to be more healthy. And oh, but you don't need to lose any more weight. And then now you begin to think, oh, oh, um, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe. But I'm not hungry, and I'm eating well, I'm drinking well. Um, hmm. So you then begin. If if more people who knew you at a certain weight begin to make more comment, you begin to now question yourself. Oh, yes. Okay, I don't want to get too skinny. Well, well exactly. You know, I don't even know scientifically if you can get too skinny. I think your body just adjusts. Mm -hmm. It does. Um, it does. It balances your weight. It yes. balances you in. And if you're not living yes. on the scale, say I need to lose. Well, for me, I don't live on the scale. I told you that. Um, I don't weigh in unless I'm at a doctor's visit. I, I, I don't want to know those numbers going up and down because I'd go crazy. Because when you're on a fast, you are going to lose weight. But then when you start putting the solids back in, you're going to gain weight. Right. So full you know? disclosure, Colleen and I are different on the on the weight, on the scale thing. Colleen and I are, are view that differently. So growing up, I never had a scale. I didn't care about a scale. I was always the same weight. I was trying to get fat. So I was <laughs> never didn't care about the scale. <laughs> but when I started fasting, um, no, actually when I started doing ketogenic, I got a scale so I could track how, what I, I was eating was affecting my weight. So it's just that it's, it's, it's a way for me to have the data, right? I'm not obsessed with it or anything, but I weigh myself every morning and that's it. I weigh myself up in the morning. I don't weigh myself up. once a day. I weigh myself and I want to see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every morning I wake up, I weigh myself right before I start my yoga and meditation. And I do that so that I see what did I eat last night and how is it affecting my body? Right. And it really tells you how it's affecting your body. And sometimes it's very shockingly like, oh my gosh, I did have three eggs yesterday. I lost two pounds. Eggs, it trigger weight loss. And so then I started doing research on that. Does eggs trigger weight loss? What's going on? Like, it's so, it's, so, it's those sorts of things that, um, surprising, right? And it, it, it sort of um, helps you, right? Like for me, I love mangoes and 
I know that's, now if I have two mangoes, I'm going to get to gain two pounds the next day. It's just it's what's going to happen. It's going to be two pounds. Now, can I lose those two pounds? In a jiffy. So it's, ne it's never a panic. It's never like, oh my God, I can't believe I have two pounds. It's none of that. But it helps me to know how certain foods affect my body, right? Um, so good data for me. So I think that if you're fasting, um, you should track it. You should no now, now if you're the type of person that you have eating disorders, don't do it. If you have um if you're obsessed with the scale, don't bother, right? Because every there are people who go on the scale every two seconds, that's not gonna help you. But if you go on the scale um once a day, track yourself, see what you ate, etc., that's fine. All right. Um I'm not buying a scale anytime soon. You don't need to. <laughs> you don't need to. The scale also tracks some other things too. <laughs> no, no, it's not just it's not just the weight. It tracks some other things as well. Um, but um, but you can also go to the doctor and you know get that tracked. But you can track exactly. it yourself too. You can get it tracked yourself. Um, but I think it's it's important just to know how things are affecting you, you know. Um, and so that's what the scale does for me. That's what the scale does for me. And yes, it 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 can freak people out because it, it can fluctuate a lot. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, in three days you can gain like five pounds. You're like, what? <laughs> what was I eating? What did I do? Uh, um, see. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. So two schools of thought on it. Pauline's work it works for her. And what I'm doing right now with it works for me. See? Okay. Great point. So you'll figure yeah. out what's yeah, figure out what yeah. works for you. All right. So do you all have any questions about fasting, starting to fast? Or even just in terms of health wise, like how it affects health. I'm looking at some comments. No, it's okay. They're talking about vegan tacos in this chat. <laughs> vegan tacos, great pill. I want to see you make some of the. Actually, maybe we should do a video together, Great Pill, and make vegan tacos together. What did I do I, today? I, I actually, I'm a huge, I'm a huge food person too. So this is so funny for people think like, um, I'm a huge food go, person. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm a big food person. I want to go back to your, um, your comment, Colleen. I totally forgot. Didn't mean to cut you off there. You were talking about the way people have reacted to you your your weight loss or you know your inches loss or whatever it is they're doing like when you're fasting so one of the things that um i find strange about people okay is that when you're looking a certain way like i had gotten so overweight and i didn't even realize it right i didn't realize i just thought oh well you know i'm i'm, I'm getting uh, round and looking good <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't obsess with it. I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna another suit. I literally was never like, oh my God, I can't. I just thought, oh, you're looking good, you know, but I didn't, I just did not realize how much I had gained over time, right? I just didn't realize right. it. Mm -hmm. And these, I was talking to one of my girlfriends um, a few weeks ago, she's a lawyer as well. And she's saying to me, um, you know, I was a little bit concerned about you um, with all the weight you were gaining. And I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah. And I said, but you never told me. Mm. How come you never, how come you never told me that Nikiki, I really think that you're gaining too much weight <laughs> because listen, I'm one of those like straightforward people. Like if you said that to me, it would make me actually probably go get a scale or go weigh myself, mm. but I didn't have a scale then. Um, never cared to weigh myself and just thought, oh, I'm just getting around or whatever, go about my business. But she was concerned about me. She was concerned about me and never said it. Right. And there's that stigma, uh, particularly, you know, in the USA that you can't tell people that they're fat or <laughs> you can't tell people that they're, you know, get, getting over the, the, the weight that they're supposed to be. And that's a, that's a huge problem because if you can't tell your friend that, listen, I'm concerned about you, um, who is going to tell them anything then, right? Well, who's going to do but, it? 
that that the new school of thought is, and I think there is a book, I think it's called Your Body is Not an Apology or something like that. And the new school of thought is that it's a judgment-free zone and um, allow people to be who they are and... Um, Body just, positivity. But yeah, seriously. <laughs> and, don't let me get me so, started. <laughs> and, and so when you when you see things happening, you just have to, like your, your friend did with you, it's best not to say anything because you don't want to be judgmental, you don't want to insult. Um, and again, it's it's the opposite when you're losing too much weight. Some not too much, but when you're losing weight, some like, are you sick? Yada yada. So now you I begin. You, yes. you go to your doctor and you check yourself. Is, is everything okay with me? Yeah. <laughs> you know. And yes. um, it's just a world that we live in. It's just listen. Just socialization it's, listen. process. Okay, listen. I'm going to tell people. I'm going to tell people what I think. And if I, if, I'm not, if you're someone, not I, 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 and I have, and I have. I'm not doing and it anymore. They don't listen anyways, and it's fine. <laughs> I'm not doing it. But, I'm not but, doing it. But I'm going to treat, yeah, because you don't need to shame people. It's not sh Stating someone, telling me that I am a black woman is not shameful because I am a black woman, and I am happy to be a black woman, and that's fine. Like, you telling someone a fact is not a shame. So if you told me that I was fat, which I was, you say, you know, Nikki, I think you're getting too fat or NL, I think you're, you know, a bit chubby. If you're my friend and you're, you say that to me, it's different than some random stranger telling me that, right? Totally different. If you're a family or a friend, right? Mm. The other thing, the other thing that I was doing, mm. Colleen, is I was actually asking people, I asked folks, I said, you know, I'm wondering how to like, you know, get my weight in check, whatever. And they, and they would say to me, oh, just exercise. You oh, know, yeah, you just need to, <laughs> you just need to tighten up. I'm like, but you need to lose something. <laughs> so listen, I feel that as a friend or a family member, you can say things and you, and you do not need to shame anybody and tell them that they're this than the other, but you can say, you know, this is what I think. And this is what you can do. Okay. Mm. And I'm, I'm always like, I'm always happy to help to like hear what I can do. Mm. Um, other people now though, they, they don't, they didn't tell me not to eat certain foods, right? That was causing me to gain weight. But now that I'm actually eating healthy, they're telling me, like Colleen is saying, there's a judgment on what I'm eating. So there's no judgment when you're eating garbage. There's no judgment when you're overweight. But there's judgment when you're getting healthy and you're getting and you're eating healthy. Just saying. Mm. That's what I've noticed. That's what I've noticed. I don't mm. know about other people's experiences, but that's what I've noticed with Well, you know, I, I guess I, I'm a little bit different because um I'm very careful because I everybody has a story and I do don't know people's stories. And sometimes mm -hmm. there could be some health issues going on with you that yes. have caused you to gain weight that you may be unhappy about. You may be on steroids, you may be going through something. And just the mere, fe just the mere mention of that may trigger um, sadness in that person. So trying to be as loving and um, gracious as possible, I don't do that. I really don't um, because um, you don't want to trigger any unhealthy behavior in that person and they may be processing it themselves and they may not have spoken to anyone um you know we just don't know what's going on in people's lives so me personally i i, I don't and i won't anymore i remember how i learned that lesson was i congratulated somebody on their pregnancy <laughs> and that was my aha moment mind your business <laughs> so yeah, I was like, oh my god, you're no, no, no. no I, I definitely don't do that. <laughs> well, I thought I was being happy for the person, but that was my aha moment. So I, 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 I you can do what you do, but we never. Well, no more. Someone, someone did that to me once. I must say, <laughs> someone did that to me. Congratulated me on being pregnant. Yeah, you see, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, and 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 that's, and, that's and, I, and I, I, I didn't, I didn't. Well, I didn't even get offended because I looked like I was pregnant. Well, you know, you, I you can were tough. see you myself. Can yeah, you I can, can see, it. but that's not even about being tough. It's like I literally could see myself, and I could see that my stomach was big, and I was fat, and I looked like yeah. I was pregnant. 
So I didn't get offended. I just actually laughed when he said it. I laughed and I said, yeah, I know I look pregnant, but I'm not. I just laughed. Oh, and he's see, like, oh, he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so I'm like, don't worry about it. Like, cause I literally look pregnant. <laughs> and you know something he's never, he, whoever yeah. he is, he's never going to do it again. Just like me, never going to do it again. It is. Never yes, he it. thought he was being nice and congratulatory. This, That's yeah, what I thought. Same way you were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm never going there again. Nope. You but know? if we don't, but if we don't talk with people, Colleen, I guess, do we wait on them to come to us then? Because how do you help people who really do may need the help? They actually could benefit from learning about fasting, for example. Right. So they, 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 they're stuck in this dieting thing where it's up and down and whatever, and they're so over it, but they could learn that fasting could really help them, not just their their weight but like their mental health their um their physical health as well um so then how do you reach those knowledge goals? is knowledge is power and continue to do what you're doing putting it out there those that um those who want to be helped or want to try they will find you or they will find dr pradeep and they will do it because information is power um, some people actually don't want to change. I remember I, in That's my true. instance, when I started fasting, had, had you not been there to literally do baby steps with me, I may not have continued with it because I enjoyed I didn't think you would have. I, I <laughs> honestly, folks, I did not think Colleen was going to continue fasting. I, 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 I did not even think she could go one day. I so know, right? I, I, like, she's I, not I, gonna... did, I did not think <laughs> I could go eight hours. Okay. Yeah. I did not yeah. think I could do it. And yeah. I, and I'm very proud of myself for sitting here knowing that you're like a great coach and, um, I didn't starve. Um, <laughs> I, I think the biggest challenge was not drinking my coconut. Remember I was coming up fast just to drink I my know. Coconut. Oh my gosh. I can't believe the, the obsession with your coconut water. <laughs> I'm like, it's only three days and then you can have all the coconut water in the world. Yeah, I know you told me that, <laughs> but I want it now. I am not a very good person to drinking water, but I'm very good at drinking coconut water. I'm good at drinking tea. I'm not good at drinking water. And if I'm drinking I'm water, either. I'm putting some lemon in it. I'm doing, I just look at water like, you need it? Yes, the body needs it. I have a daughter and she walks around with a liter thing. Guzzle, That's guzzle, my guzzle. Mom. Yeah, guzzle, guzzle, mom. guzzle. That me. Like, yeah, I, I'm challenged by that. And I, I don't know if I want to change it because I someone has already told me, my doctor says, well, you're drinking tea, you're drinking coconut water, you're drinking water, it's okay, just keep going. And I'm like, oh, and, okay. Yeah. And also remember this, this is something that um, I was told as well because I'm, I'm, believe it or not, the same way about water. Never mm. loved it, don't care. Um, my dad used to have to call me at college every day and say, did you have water today? Day. no drink it while i'm on the phone with you because he knew yeah that i just wouldn't drink water but this is what i found I have out. my water right here and i haven't taken yeah. a sip no i'm gonna take but a this sip is, this is what i <laughs> this is what i found out about water mm. drinking i eat a lot of vegetables me too they're like 90 percent water so i literally am eating my water i don't <laughs> need to drink no, I'm serious. I don't, I don't need to drink. Yes, my doctor said that to me. Yeah, she was like, but you you, you have a lot of water anyway. Yeah. You're drinking your water. And I'm like, oh. Uh, maybe that's what it no, is. I'm sorry, though. eating. you're eating your water, she said. You're yeah. eating water because you're eating your cabbage and your chocho and your this. And I'm like, and all the cu I love cucumbers. And I'm, God, eat so much cucumbers. I love cucumbers. It's so much water. Oh, I, cucumber is I love so cucumber. much water. Yeah. So, so you're liter you're you're very well hydrated, and that's why you're not thirsty. Ah, uh, uh, teach, teach. Because I, <laughs> I have a, I have water everywhere, but it, I am so challenged, and I just want to drink more. But then I'd rather drink two of these of coconut water, and you know, and mm -hmm. and for us as women, we. Well, I wear lipstick, right? But I don't really put makeup on. Um, um, but you won't see me without a little bit of lipstick on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge fan of makeup. I used to be a beauty consultant, so selling yeah. makeup, you know, I'm a makeup girl. Yeah, nothing's um, wrong. Hey, nothing's wrong with it, you know? But uh, and, and nothing wrong you, with you and nothing's wrong with not drink. wanting it on your face either. 
There right, you go. Right. <laughs> right. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink my spring water. And my daughter taught me, if you're going to drink water, mom, it has to be spring water. I'm like, oh, why? And then she gave me the whole thing. Okay. So now I drink spring water if I'm drinking water outside of my coconut water. Yes. Awesome. So I'm putting in the chat. Does anyone have any questions? for Colleen, who was so resistant to fasting. And if you fasted, um, if you're in the chat and you fasted, please let us know um, how you liked it or didn't like it. And it's okay not to like it because I'm proof. You don't have to like it. It is. Yeah, it's 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 fine not to like it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but then. Oh, you, oh, <laughs> Cece just put this in the chat. I always drink water. My favorite drink. Oh. <laughs> oh so well, she better you, come you coach me. Her on, yes. <laughs> Cece, you need to coach Colleen on water drinking, okay? <laughs> Put the coconut water down, Colleen, and pick up the water. I, I don't understand, CC, how it can be a favorite drink. It doesn't taste like anything. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> but coconut water, man, that tastes so good. <laughs> oh, by You're the way, man. it's funny. When okay. I'm talking about coconut water, I'm not talking about the cans or the tins or the boxes. I'm no, I'm thinking, about uh, no. The actual coconut water. That's what yes. I'm thinking about too. Oh no, I wasn't thinking. No, listen, oh. I tried. Okay. I tried, okay. I tried one of those boxes. They're horrible. Oh, oh my, gosh. my gosh! I'm like, this is what people think coconut water is. It's a travesty. It's a oh travesty. my gosh! Yeah, They're no. Horrible. Oh. Yeah, we're not talking about those those things. No. The real <laughs> coconut water from the coconut, that green coconut. Mm -hmm. And you get to have the jelly after it and enjoy. See, more eating, right? Ah. We love to eat. We're good. We love <laughs> we're to talking eat. about fasting here, but we're, <laughs> we're, big, we're big eaters. We are huge eaters. All right. Yeah. So, definitely. so does CC? Do you have a um a question about fasting? Oh, so Gray Pill was asking which kind of coconut water, okay, to 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 get. Gray Gray Pill definitely get the the one that's still in the fruit. <laughs> The one where someone is opening it for you yes. and pouring it in. That's and again, it, it depends where it. in the world you are, because maybe it's not accessible. I don't know. Um, it isn't in, so. in yeah, in, in many parts of the U.S., you, you're not going to get fresh coconut water. And for mm -hmm. some reason, I don't know why they can't just have it like, just just pour it in. It, it, maybe they need to preserve it or something that they put garbage in it to preserve it because it, I don't know, if it's you got pour a funny it just, taste. It just tastes okay. funny. It, yeah, uh, it does. Something it, it is in it, though. Funny. Yeah, something's it. in it. There is one that says, and I've read it, I've, I've taken the time to get it on the shelf, and it says absolutely no preservatives. And it's, uh, I think it's um, a different process they use, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, there's no preservative. I, I, I've forgotten the name of it. Um, I did try it. I didn't like it. Yeah. And I just went back to <laughs> get my it out of the fruit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so Jennifer said, thank you for saying, for saying that as long as you have fruits and vegetables, um, because she's, she's challenged with drinking water as well. I think a lot of us are, and, and, you know, we, we keep it, we keep silent on it, right? Because you're told drink eight glasses a day and blah, blah. But, and by the way, I, I completely disagree with eight glasses a day. <laughs> and, and, I'm going to do a video on that because I've done research on it that it's actually not true, that eight glass thing, okay? I think two glasses. But anyways, um, <laughs> from, from my research. And also too much water can kill you as well. Yeah, so I'm gonna be putting that video out. Yes, Ooh. from scientific research. It does not just me saying it, okay? Ooh. Literally, yes. So. Um, if you're getting enough from your fruits and vegetables, you don't need to douse yourself. I had a girlfriend that was dousing. Like, I felt so bad. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, I got to drink a gallon. And so and the, before the day is out, 
And that's how you end up killing yourself because it's doing some stuff to you that you're forcing because your body doesn't want it. Your body doesn't want it. So there's, you know, yeah, there's a, there's a balance with how much you're eating in terms of fruits and vegetables versus, and, and even tea and coffee and whatever they, because that's all, you know, you're all getting that liquid. Versus, I'm a big oh, tea I also drinker. Have to drink. Me too. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a tea girl. I'm a big tea drinker. You know? So yeah. I'd rather yeah. drink two cups and three cups of tea than the water. Like, so Unfortunately, me too. Yeah. And I yeah. and I source tea. I will get, you know, the, 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 the leaves and I'll make the perfect yes. cup of tea. And perfect. I will, rather than drinking the, just the, the, the pre-made bags, I will make my own tea and walk with that. Awesome. Oh, here's yes. what I discovered the other day. I think I may have told you. Um, I went to get a pineapple mm -hmm. and I needed to make some tea. So what I did was I cut up the pineapple, put it in the cup, put some, a little drop of cayenne with it, put the hot water on it. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. Mm. So now my tea is Natural pineapple tea. tea with cayenne. That's very nice. Very and it nice. Tastes, I don't know about anybody else, but for me, it tastes so good. So I make a big thing of it. On the mm -hmm. go. Oh, that sounds really good. Yeah, you should try. That it. Sounds really good. Yeah, I'm, I, I am going to try it now that I'm going to do it in April when I go paleo because keto we don't even bother pineapple, but paleo uh -huh. I'm going to have I'm going to have pineapple. Nice. Just don't, just don't use the skin because if you're not sure where the pineapple's grown, there are people who say boil the skin, but if it's been subjected to pesticides, you definitely don't want to do that. But of course, just use the interior part of the pineapple. I will do that because I'm a huge yeah. pineapple girl. I love pineapple, by the way. Yeah, like, it's a lot of fan. sugar, but it is, you know, hey, which is why keto sugar. don't, which is why we yeah. don't have it on. Yeah, keto. it's a lot of sugar. But, <laughs> yeah, um, you have to be able to regulate tea. that. Yeah, yeah, makes a great tea. So y'all, we're gonna wrap up. So if you have any questions about fasting, um, you know, either a one day fast, um, one meal a day or intermittent fasting, full fasting that we do 48 hours or 36 hours or a 72 hour fast. Let us know in the comments. And if you're interested in joining our fasting team, fabulous fasting team that we are fasting for four years now. Um, oh, you let us you. know. <laughs> <laughs> several team members, several team members. Um, then let let me know and and we'll definitely um add you okay it's also like good motivation and just health and wellness in general for us okay um i am not going to go into a lot of i was going to go to the statistics but it's very depressing when i look at the statistics of, of black women like we're literally in the bottom um in terms of health and wellness right mm. in terms of heart disease obesity, um, high blood pressure, strokes, heart attacks. Um, it's really bad. It's really bad. And fasting can help us with all those things. So I hope that we try something different because if what you're working, I mean, what you're doing is not working for you. And if you're on medications, that means you're not healthy. And so let us look at some alternatives that we can do incrementally incrementally even if you do like you just don't eat for 12 hours and you do an eight hour eating window and just starting off with that that can help you a lot okay um there's a, there's a question in the chat um colleen that says um to what extent does fasting cleanse the colon um well the I cannot speak to science, but I can tell you what it does for me because you're not padding your colons with any any new foods. And so when I'm fasting, I find that my bowel movements are very consistent and I am able to be even more regulated. And so when you come back to eating, and as you've taught, do it very softly, very gently, um, you feel extremely, I don't know, I feel lighter. It's like, a, it's like you've just emptied the tank, right? Um, we, how many feet is our colon? It's, it's a lot of feet. So, I mean, we've been eating all our lives. We've just been going, putting more, putting more, putting more. It's like putting gas in your car, driving your car, 
and never giving it a pause. So it, it has to have some benefits to your colons. And again, I will, I'm always careful. I don't speak to the signs. I can only speak to what I do and how I feel. It's great for your gut health. You want me to take over and talk some more? Yes, because, oh, hold on. I can't see the sorry, chat. I was trying, sorry, I was trying to see, I was trying to fix the layout. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, so, so, so I will say, um, Nicola, that it is, it's a huge cleanse for the colon. Yes, it's cleansing your entire body because as, as Colleen was saying, you're literally like, resting your digestive system and you're also repairing while that's going on so it's huge for colon health all right so um definitely we'll we'll maybe look at doing a video on that doing some more in-depth research on it but i do know that it's repairing your entire system at 72 hours mm. okay um there's another question Oh, wonderful. Cece said she enjoyed the she enjoyed the chat. She's learning a lot from this live. Um, so happy you're learning a lot, Cece. That's great. Um, so, all right. So Jennifer asked this question. She said, um, so you're fasting if you avoid breakfast and lunch at least three times a week. Yes, you're fasting. Yes. Yes, Jennifer, you're fasting. In fact, you're fasting when you go to sleep. <laughs> True. Yeah, you're fasting then as well. All right. Oh, that's funny. That's one of the tricks you taught us. Because yes. if, if you're on the fast and you go to bed, guess what? You don't have to think about food. <laughs> so when you when you start fasting and you have a shut off time, say in my case, I don't eat after eight o'clock, right? And if you create a very healthy um, bedtime habit, those eight hours of sleep is fasting. So that that adds up. That's what you taught me. So, so in the chat, you'll hear somebody say, I'm hungry, but I think I'll go to bed. <laughs> That's yes, I go to bed when I'm fasting. I go to bed early. I go to bed early because yeah. <laughs> because then I don't have to think about food. Or I'm hungry and I'm oh my yeah. God, I'm just going to sleep. Just go to sleep. Let's go to sleep. So that's a good trick. Um, that's a really good trick. Absolutely. Go to sleep. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're sleeping eight hours generally, right? Seven to eight hours. Um, that's fasting. And then if you think about it too, a lot of times when you go to the doctor and you're going to do certain tests, right? For whatever it is, you have to do a fast. Yeah. So how could true. fasting ever be bad for you? You have to <laughs> you literally have to fast. That's true. Yeah. So, um, so I think, yeah, if you skip, if you're skipping breakfast, which again, the name, if you haven't heard this before, I'll say it again. When you eat breakfast, you're breaking your fast. And at whatever time of day you eat it, that is breaking your fast. So if you happen to break your fast at 7 a.m. or if you break it at noon, it's still breaking the fast. Okay. And, and there's no, there's no rule that said we are supposed to break fast at, 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. Um, you can break fast at noon or 1 p.m. Okay. Whenever you eat, <laughs> you're breaking the fast. You know, and it's funny, right? When, when I was very young, I used to remember my grandfather probably only eating one main meal a day before he left for work. And my grandmother would pack the canteen of all the things he needed for the day. Um, but then when you go to um, these westernized countries, it's eat all day. Yes, just constantly shove food yeah. in your mouth, yeah. shove food in your mouth, all these illnesses, get yeah. sick and die yeah. young. We're, we're mm. trying to avoid that. We're trying to avoid that. Um, if it's not working for you health-wise, um, then change it. Yeah. Just make, just baby steps is fine. Baby steps is fine. If you just decide, you know what, I'm just gonna push breakfast back to noon. Or, you know what, I'm going to eat a big meal at 4 p.m. and that's going to be it for me. 
-hmm. you know, I'm going to make sure I get all my nutrients and whatnot in that one big meal. And you'll be, you'll be satiated. You'll be happy. You're, you're full and you're good, but you're not lethargic and have to go to sleep because <laughs> yeah, you're eating too much, you're eating too much carbs. Yeah. Or sugar. Sugar. Or sugar. 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 I was sugar. A, I was a big yes. Twix girl. Love me a Twix. Oh my God. Now no. it's so sweet. Oh <laughs> my. Yes, yeah, seriously. Twix was my thing. Your taste buds do change when you start fasting, everybody. Oh yeah. Big um, time. That's like pure ooh in my mouth. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay. This is funny. Great Phil. Great Phil. Great Phil, it's so good to see you. It's so good to see you, Great Phil. We I'm definitely gonna get in touch with you, okay? Um so Grayfield said, um, thanks for explaining this. I believe when a lot of people hear fast, they think it means to not eat at all for days. <laughs> that is true. That is true. But um, we all, yeah, we do all fast when we're sleeping. Everybody is fasting unless yeah. you can't sleep at all. And then that's a problem if you've never slept. But if you've ever slept <laughs> fasting that's when you're it. sleeping, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, and you can do it just starting off. Like I said, a good way to start off is just intermittent fasting, right? Colleen, like start off just pushing, pushing one of your meals back. Um, maybe starting your, your first meal at 10 AM instead of 7 AM or maybe at noon. Um, and then maybe another meal, um, in the evening, maybe like at 6 PM and then you're good. But if you're eating, this is one of the things that I really I'm imploring you all to do, make sure you have enough protein, especially women um, over a certain age, make sure you're having enough protein in your body. Because a lot of times what I've found is that if folks don't have enough protein, then they're prone to snacking and you're snacking on chips and cakes and all these things. But listen, if you had enough protein, you have no desire to eat anything else. So make sure that you're having enough protein. All right. Um, we tend to like, yeah, we tend to not eat enough protein, I think, as we're getting older and just make mm. sure you're having enough. Um, so you're satiated because protein and healthy fat satiates you like you, you're full. Yeah. And if you're full, you're not going to be stuffing yourself with garbage. Believe me, you won't. No, you, you won't. You just don't. Yeah. I think it's really important to ask yourself, am I hungry? Am I hungry or am I just missing food? That was the big light bulb moment for me. So just, true. Just being yeah. still and saying, am I hungry? And I'm like, actually, I'm not hungry, but I do miss chewing something. The habits. It's the habits. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's the so habit. once I, I got through that with your support, then it was easier for me. I just have to ask myself, am I hungry? Mm. No, you're not hungry. No. No need to try to eat something. And then when you finish your fast, you feel, oh my God, what an accomplishment. It's Huge like, accomplishment. Oh my yeah, God. It is. You feel so good. It's amazing. And I, I think perhaps for some people, it might be challenging for them if they don't like the kitchen. You see, like for you and I, it's very easy for us to go in and concoct something, yeah. just having fun making the soup. Somebody else may not yes. like to do that. And that is a problem. Yes. And so then they have to figure out what am I going to eat now? Where am I going to get it from? You know, yes, and I think that's something you could probably speak to. I think it's very easy for us to assume everybody likes the kitchen. I like the kitchen. It's, you like the kitchen. That is, that is, that is so true. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people do not want to be in the kitchen and yeah. it's true. Yeah. It's, it, it is harder. It is yeah. harder for folks who have to either order food or go out to get food or have someone else do the food for you. Yeah. Um, it, it definitely is a different um, meditation. I agree. And there are a lot, there are lots of folks who don't want to be in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So what I would say with, with that is one of the things that may help is to try to do some prep, some prep for the week. So if, if you can, if you can get someone else to help you, that's great. But if you can't, just try to do a prep for the week, um, a Saturday or Sunday, take a couple hours and just do your prep, put your stuff in those glass containers um, and put it in the fridge. Because if, if it's already prepped for you, then you're less likely to snack 
less likely to want to go out and get something that you probably don't want normally, right? Fast mm-hmm. food or whatever. But if you prep, if you prep, then you, you would be okay. Cause you, your meal is already there. Hmm. So, but I do, I've had people say to me, can you actually like sell meal prep foods for us? <laughs> now there's another several, business idea. Yes. Yeah, several mm. men have said that to me. Cause they're like, cause we're not going in the kitchen to cook anything. And do I'm you, like, okay. Have you, yes. have you ever seen Dr. Bobby Price's? Um... Love Dr. Bobby Price. I follow him. Yes. Yeah, so maybe some of yes. us who don't who don't like prepping can can follow yeah. Dr. Bobby Pinfall. Price and yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Bobby Price is great. Meal prep, I think, makes a huge difference in you whether or not you eat stuff that's not going to be good. So, absolutely, I may do some meal prep. I may do some meal prep on Sundays. We'll see. Mm. Um, now that I'm, you know, back in full force. I made I made some a lion's mane for brunch today. I did a lion's mane um, tuna, which was like eating. My daughter said to me, I said, just come have brunch with me. And she came to, what was that tuna? I said, no, it was mushroom, lion's mane. She mm. goes, mom, it tasted like tuna. I said, aha, you got all your protein with lunch with me, didn't you? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Mushrooms are so wonderful, but I've never had that. So you're gonna send me the uh the info on that colleen yeah, yeah. all right so it's yummy yeah. yummy yummy oh gosh i'm all about the yum <laughs> yeah told you i like right, food. <laughs> <laughs> i'm all about the yum so mm-hmm. thank you all um i don't see any more questions so we're gonna wrap up but thank you so much colleen for coming and sharing your fasting journey with us i'm so incredibly proud of you and what you've accomplished honestly like so proud of you you're like absolutely the biggest rock star ever really oh truly. there are people oh. who come into the thing and they're like and but with you with you and the way you overcame each they were like i'm gonna try again you know what i'm gonna try again i love that because that's really humanity right really and truly that yeah. is a natural human condition right All and right. especially if you decide i'm gonna just I'm going to do it again. I, I, I fell off the bike. I'm going to do it again. And it's just so fantastic. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone who has tuned in to us. Thank you. <laughs> and if you're and, thinking of joining a fasting team, she is an excellent coach. No judgment. She just wants the results. And once you start getting it for yourself, it's amazing. She is an excellent coach. At the end of the day, I just wanted to be in control of your health. Black women, let's take control of our own health and get well. All right. Cheers to Thank healthy you. living. Happy Sunday. Bye. Happy Sunday. Bye bye.